So what we want to do this morning is we want to start off with some clues in the Old Testament. Technically, we call them types and shadows. But if you just as a layman, there are clues in the Old Testament. And they speak of a reality in the New Testament. So we want to look at a type and a shadow of redemption in the Old Testament. And one of, uh, one of those types and shadows in the Old Testament of redemption, the story of redemption, is God bringing his people out of Egypt into the land of promise. So here, they were in Egypt slaves for 400 years. Slaves. But in one night, because of the Passover lamb, one night, in one night, they were delivered. They were redeemed. So the Bible says in Psalm 105 verse 37, he brought them out with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person among all their tribes. They were brought out of slavery and into the riches of God's own kingdom. The next thing, what happened? They came out of Egypt that night and they headed straight to the Red Parted before them, they came under the cloud. What is that a type of? Baptism. There, they were baptized into Moses. Here, you and I are baptized into Christ. And now, the next thing. They are walking, journeying through the land of promise. And they have the cloud. They have the pillar of fire. The cloud and the fire is talking about God's guidance. God leading, God showing. But the next thing we see that happened as they were making the journey was the manna and the quail. What is manna and quail a type of for us? Spiritual food. And then we, we have the rock and the water that flowed out of the rock that, that quenched uh, uh, their thirst. For us, it's talking about spiritual thirst. Meaning that as we are journeying, everything, all our needs are satisfied through the finished work of Christ on the cross. So now let's go to Nehemiah 9, 20 and 21. You also gave your good spirit to instruct them. You did not withhold your manna from their mouth. You gave them water for their thirst. Forty years you sustained them. God sustaining them. They lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear out and their feet did not swell. God took care of their clothes. Their clothes did not wear out. Their feet did not swell. Their sandals or shoes, what they were, everything. God supernaturally sustained them as they made their journeys. Talk about God taking care of all their needs. We know they came all the way to the edge of the promised land, but they, because of unbelief, because of disobedience, they didn't enter in. They spent 40 years or close to 40 years just wandering around in the wilderness. But God still took care of them. How did they enter the land of promise? First, they crossed over river Jordan. Most Bible teachers would, believe, would, would, say, would interpret the crossing of the river Jordan as a baptism in the Holy Spirit. The next thing we do is we see them do is circumcision. It's a sign of cleansing from sin or consecration. And then they had to fight. But they fought from a place of rest. So, how do we receive redemption blessings? Looking at the type. Number one, get rid of unbelief. Second, come into obedience. Third, the cross of Jordan, which is a type of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So you and I need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Number four. We need to consecrate ourselves. Every part of my being, spirit, soul, and body, needs to be sanctified, set apart for God, consecrated to God. Because if I give the devil a foothold, that's an area I'm not going to enjoy the redemptive blessings of God. The number five, we fight to possess. And one last thing, number six. Once they came into the land of promise, no more manna, no more quail. That means you, as a mature person in Christ, because of your faith in God and you walking with God, we together fight together and we possess and eat of the land together. <laughs>